Everyone knows that shopping for the gearhead in your life is tough. So I have 15 of the absolute best EDC gift ideas for 2023, period. And I'm saving a little bit of a curveball for the last one. So let's do the damn thing. So this first item is something I've actually talked about before. I think I put it on a previous list. I've just really fallen in love with this item. It's really simple, but the company itself, I respect so much. Jayberry and Bentley Miller, um, congratulations, by the way, they just had their first child and I got to meet their parents just a few weeks ago at Georgia Bushcraft. Amazing, amazing people through and through. The whole family is awesome and they make incredible gear. And this is one of my favorite things. This is their belt pouch. That's just tough possum belt pouch. And that's what it is. It is a pouch with some belt loops. That's it, you open it up, there's nothing inside other than the stuff I've put in there. It's literally just a pouch. But the reason I like these so much is because you can throw them on your belt and you can have little toolkits. So in this one, for example, I keep this one in a duffel bag in my truck and have just a few little small tools. These stay in there with a headlamp and I can just throw this thing on my belt and go. Just to jump ahead really quickly, I used in conjunction with this by threading Instead of putting it on my belt, I put it on the strap of my bum bag and it just kind of built onto the bum bag, which is, this was a really sweet setup and this is how I ran around Georgia Bushcraft the entire time. So obviously I have four of these. Uh, I might have a fifth or sixth one somewhere. I, I keep buying these things. Every time I see Tough Possum, I end up grabbing one or two more of these because they're just good to have as different things. Camera setup, whatever. They're awesome, they're affordable, great people, great product. That is the Tough Possum belt pouch. Going back to what I just talked about, number two on this list is the bum bag from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Obviously this is the exclusive colorway for carry commission. They come in a bunch of different colors. Uh, I have gone through a bunch of different waste packs. This year specifically and last year, I used the Vanquist Dendrite and then more recently the Vertix Long Walks waste pack. These two are very similar. Um, they come with hook and loop on the inside. This one has built in organization. They're both really good. But the reason I really like this one is because it's smaller and I tend to cram things full. If there's space, I'm going to use it up. Look how full this thing is. That's just how I am. Ask Ricky. It's just the way that I am. So when I carry something smaller, I tend to carry less stuff. But the reason I like this one, the reason I come back to the bum bag so much is because I actually use this as a pouch in my bag. I don't carry it around my, my body a lot. But when I need it, I can go, but I carry this in my backpack. So something that's a little more compact and works more like a pouch than a full on waist pack, I, I find it just a little bit more useful. So number two on the list is the bum bag from Blue Ridge Overland Gear and, and Carry Commission if you wanna buy one from me. So number three on this list is a backpack. And I have to be completely, totally honest. I'm not using this backpack right now because I'm using a different backpack. We're gonna talk about that one really quickly. My current backpack is this brand new one from Big Idea Design. And the only reason I'm not including it on this list is because it's currently pre-order. It's on Kickstarter and you can't buy it just yet. I mean, you can buy it, but you're not gonna get it for now. So this is probably a bad idea for a gift unless the person's okay with like an IOU for a few months. Awesome backpack. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later in a different video. The backpack that I have carried the most this year is this one right here. This is the Vertix Gamut backpack. This is their newer gamut and it is awesome. It's a little big, it's a little bit overkill for like an EDC bag, but I've really enjoyed it. It's got all sorts of organization and stuff. So on the front, you have this expandable pocket that has laser cut molly inside. You have a side pocket that's got a little bit of storage in here or like organization. This side is actually a bottle pocket on the outside of the bag. Around back, you have a laptop pocket, which is padded, very, very nice. It has a loop here if you want to throw it over your luggage, your rolling luggage for travel. There's a quick access pocket here on the top, which I need that. Glad I opened that. Forgot it was in there. And then finally, your main pocket. I can't remember if this comes standard or not. I think it does. These definitely do. But what I really love about Vertix is that they have a bunch of these accessories that you can add to the inside of your bag. So this is two different accessories. So this is a laptop pocket that you can add to something like the long walks. It doesn't need to be in here, but with this one, you can add all sorts of organization to the existing hook and loop inside here. And you've got two bigger pockets, smaller pockets. It's just a great way to add organization. And that's one thing I love is almost everything on the inside of Vertix bags is hook and loop. Very, very adaptable to however you carry your bag 
and they have various sizes, right? So if this gamut is too big, the Ready Pack is the step down from that. They're also a great EDC bag, but this is the one that I've really enjoyed. And when I travel, they have a bigger one than this. It's called the Base Camp. It looks exactly the same. It's just this on a larger scale. Also awesome. But Vertix, great bags, amazing bags. Uh, and I have a code. If you use BDEDC, I believe that's the code, BDEDC, you get 15% off. So yeah, check out Vertix. Use my code. <laughs> I have to attribute this next one to my good buddy Brandon over at BattleBox. He showed this to me last week and I had to include it. Had to, it's awesome. I used it while we were at Georgia Bushcraft, but this is a company called Fix-It Sticks and they make tools. This one, for example, is an optics kit. So if you have firearms, you can adjust your optics with this. Obviously it can be used for a lot of different things, but you have a T-bar and a torque limiter. So you can put, say, let's say you need a torque spit to adjust something, you put this in here, and then you have your Torx limiter here in your inch pounds. So you can torque this to the correct specs of say an optic, which is really, really neat. They have a bunch of different torque limiters. So for specific uh, torques, but this one is the all in one. So it goes from zero to 65 inch pounds. Very awesome. But what really caught my attention was this sort of tool right here. So it is a full on T-bar set. So this is the basic one. You have a T-handle grip basically, and it works either way, right? It's just quarter, quarter inch attachments. So you can use this in any kind of configuration and you hold four bits in the tool that you're currently working with. But basically you have a, a few different hex options here. It looks like they're all gonna be uh, SAE. You have different flathead options as well as like Phillips one or two. You can obviously switch any of these bits out with ones that are more compatible with what you need. They also sell bits individually, but that is one of the coolest, most compact sets I've seen for screwdrivers. But this one is really awesome because you got a ball lock here, this locks in, and it's a ratcheting T-handle T driver. That's awesome. Uh, so you can have your static drives here, and then you have a ratcheting drive here. This one also has a pry bar that goes into the end of the tool. It's quarter inch drive. So this comes out and you have a pry as well with more wrenches. Um, yeah, so affordably priced, really, really functional, just well-rounded tools in this very compact kit. Like this goes into my toolbox in my truck now, no questions asked. It's replacing several different things all in one. Yeah, no, these things are really awesome. These are the Fix-It Sticks. I want to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Wee Knife. We make some of the best production knives on the market right now. And in fact, they make some of my favorite knives that are out right now, such as the Wee Hyphen and Vision R, as well as the Civivi Sakoki and the Sincut Tynan. They make all of those. But Wee does more than just make great knives. They work with some of the best designers in the industry, Gavco, Ray Laconico, Bob Ross, and more to make amazing knives accessible for any budget. Let's take Snex, for example. He is a truly special designer. The Wii Vision R put his work in the hands of many with little to no compromise, and then they took it a step further with the Civivi Vision FG, making a design that would otherwise be limited to the likes of high-end custom knives available as a mind-blowingly good budget-friendly knife. And that's honestly the best part of Wii. They have a little bit of something for everybody, and I'm talking in terms of design, wide-ranging color options, and price points. With Wii, for example, you are getting high-end, no-compromise designs for a fair price. Meanwhile, Civivi offers many similar, if not the exact same models for a fraction of the price. And then there's Cut, which makes even more affordable knives, as low as 40 and sometimes even $30, it's truly impressive. And since we're on the topic of budget mindedness, right now you can save even more. We Knife is holding a Black Friday sale that's good for Civivi and Syncut as well on their respective sites. That's up to 25% off most models. Newer products might be excluded, but there is a free gift with any purchase of $29 or more while supplies last. The sale lasts through mid-December, so you can hit the links in the description down below to check out everything that We Knife, Civivi, and Syncut have to offer. Get yourself a new knife, treat yourself, or also get one for your loved ones for the holiday season. And once again, I want to thank We Knife for sponsoring this video. All right, next up is something I've talked about quite a bit recently, uh, 711L. So this is the ratchet wrench that goes with a Leatherman. So now that the Arc has a driver, or now that I have the Arc and it has a driver, you can have a ratchet wrench on your Leatherman. Awesome. 
but they also make one that just functions as a basic screwdriver. So you can use it just like this. If you need more torque, you can use it this way. And it ratchets as well. So you can get torque, you can ratchet things. If you need more leverage, since it's quarter inch drive on the handle, you can extend that out. Really awesome, isn't it? I love it. I freaking love this thing. And if you need an extension here, you can just move that there and extend it this way. Uh, these things are sweet. I really like them. They are basic, simple. I don't know how this hasn't been done before now, but I keep one of these in my bum bag. Uh, just a little kit like this right here with an extension, the ratchet wrench itself, and a selection of bits. It's one of my favorite things I found this year. It's cool. Some of you may not think it's very necessary or handy, but it is. And it's awesome to have a little compact screwdriver like that and a little kit like this. This one is probably going to cause a little bit of controversy just because of what's been going on with it. But this is the Leatherman Arc. We all have been waiting for the perfect Leatherman and many have said that this is it. You have a easy open blade, something you don't have to destroy your thumb with. It's a magna cut blade. It's a straight blade instead of serrated. And they brought back some of the best things like the bit driver and the eyeglasses screwdriver, which also has an interchangeable bit. Awesome. I missed this off the wave. And that's one of the things I hated from the free P4 series or the P series. And uh, they got rid of the standalone Phillips driver, but left this big wide flathead, which is a great little pry bar. This has one of the most complete and awesome tool sets for EDC and for my personal use ever. It got rid of the big serrated blade. You now have the saw, scissors, and the best file, which has a really fine like diamond file and then a coarse file on the back. This thing is great. So yeah, don't get me wrong. I know that the Leatherman Arc is expensive. No question about it. It's a very expensive Leatherman. Maybe the most expensive other than the garage? Don't quote me on that. I have a charged TTI and I know it was expensive, but it wasn't this expensive. Anyway, the point is uh, you really can't go wrong with it. They have a great warranty. So this thing's gonna last a very, very, very long time. And they do seem to be aware of the issues uh, or the only issue that I know of is the cutters. Yeah, they've made a lot of improvements. We are also gonna do a more in-depth video on the Arc very, very soon. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with it. If you get it for anybody this Christmas or this holiday season, they will be ecstatic. Trust me. All right, so this is one I feel like I almost talk about too much because anytime I do a video like this, I feel like I talk about these, but I'm including them on this list as a combo because this has been my favorite key setup ever. And it's been this way for a long, long time. Uh, so first is the JRW gear tough clip. We obviously have a carry commission version in Topo. They have them in brass, titanium. There's several different versions with other companies. So I'm not saying you have to buy the carry commission one. You can get just a plain one from Jamie, but they are awesome. They seem too simple. And some people don't understand why you would pay what these cost for a paper clip, but it is the best key clip I've ever used, period. Um, these things always stay on here. I'm not including them on my list, but what I am including is the other part of my key setup, and that is the Urban Carver's Keeper. This thing is great. So this just feeds onto the tough clip, and then it goes on my belt loop. And on my belt loop, I can reach down, fill my keys, pull them off, unlock the door, and without looking, put my keys back every time. I cannot convey how great this key setup is. It's simple, minimalist, and it works really well. It is not cheap. Again, I get it, but it is worth it to me. Uh, you can get cheaper versions of them directly from them. You can get a brass tough clip, which is going to be a little bit cheaper without any engraving on it. And you can also go to Urban Carvers and get, I think he does these in Delrin and also for other plastics and polymers, maybe Ultimate at this point, I don't know, but you can get cheaper keepers as well. Um, if you like the Topo, there's only one place to get that, but the next item on the list is another thing that has basically been a constant in my carry for a long time. When I build these gift guides, I try to not include the same things all the time, and I like to include an array, a selection of different things. And I know this comes down to personal preference, but for me, uh, my wallet. Can you zoom in on my pocket? I know this is going to be a little bit weird, but just right here. I noticed this this morning when I was getting ready. I was like, I have a worn spot right here on my pants. And it took me a second to realize it's from the button on my wallet. <laughs> it's this. It sits there every day. Same spot. And I have several pairs of pants now. I checked. And they all have a wear spot right there from the button, the snap on my wallet. So the wallet that I use and carry almost without fail every day 
is the Rustic Heirloom Hitchhiker. This is the Carry Commission one, uh, and there's a reason there's a lot of overlap with this list and the stuff I carry in Carry Commission. Carry Commission is a collection of gear that I love, so it would make sense that the things I recommend are the things I have on my website and have my own versions of. So yeah, again, I'm not saying buy from us. Joe has drops almost, I think, every week. He has drops every single week, so you can buy a wallet directly from Joe. But the, the Hitchhiker is and has been my favorite wallet ever. A very close second would be several different wallets from OpenSea, but I always seem to come back to the Hitchhiker. Uh, you snap this open and on the backside you have quick access to certain things. I keep my ID back here and other cards that I grab a little more frequently. Uh, I typically have cash here halved in the back and then I have cards in the front. It'll hold up to like 11 cards if you really want it to, but this has been a, just a very slim, minimal wallet. Even when it's packed full and loaded, it's still pretty thin and minimal in the pocket. These will be in stock at some point in December, but we'll also have a restock of the Omo. Do you have your Pueblo uh, in this color, which I don't know what Ricky has done to this thing, but we'll have a restock in this one twice before the end of the year. So if you're looking for a Christmas gift in one of these colors, check out carry commission stay tuned for when we will restock those we will do email restock notifications so yeah that's it rustic heirloom hitchhiker has been my favorite wallet since joe made this thing and uh yeah it's just tough to get it out of my pocket so i'm gonna recommend it that's that all right the next item on this list uh cameras hate because you can't focus on it because it's matte black and just they just hate this thing i got this at blade show west and I'm gonna be completely honest, it's not my favorite way to store knives. Like if I'm gonna carry knives home and stuff, the reason I'm recommending this over other knife storage solutions, so one of my favorites is the NAFS Burrito Grande. I also really like the PNW Bushcraft Maple Tool Knife Roll. Awesome, love both of those for storing knives in a portable fashion. But this one is the Vault Case Secure and it comes with a TSA lock. So this is locked, the zippers are locked, and my kids cannot get into this thing, and that is crucial for me. Uh, my kids don't really get into things very much, but kids are unpredictable. They know not to play with knives or touch knives, but sometimes they'll just pick a knife up and be like, hey daddy, here's your knife. I don't want that. So if I have knives, I want them locked and secure in this thing right here. This is the only thing like this that I know of. I know last year in my gift guide, I included a gun safe. Koenig has sadly dissolved. They don't exist anymore. And there are other gun safes like that, but this is more EDC oriented. So let's pop it open real quick. So put the code in, pop the lock, just like any TSA lock on your luggage, and you have knife storage. This thing is not organized, <clears throat> but it's a good example of how you can keep things secure, safe, carry them about, and keep kids and prying hands off of your things. So that is the vault case secure. There is a version that does not have that TSA lock and it's a little bit cheaper, uh, but this thing is awesome. So again, I try not to talk about the same things every single time. I don't want to make the same list every year. That doesn't really benefit anybody. And while we're on the topic of old gift guides, all of my old ones still stand up. We went through them before going through, uh, like building this video, they all hold up. So use those. If you don't like what you see on this list, go check out those other gift guides I've made in the past because great recommendations there as well. But this uh, is just something that's been, well, this company has been on every gift guide I've made since this company came to be. This is Holman Hadfield. I'm not paid to say this. I don't even know if I have affiliates with them or anything. I, I don't know. They send them to me and they're awesome. And this is the coolest way to store your knives ever. And this is just everything they've built prior on steroids. So this is called the Armada. They have fixed one of the biggest issues, which is before you had to lift this whole thing off. Now you have a hinged lid, which is quite nice. And uh, this thing's just too big to talk about on the table. There is a drawer here, which has tons of room for all sorts of goods. These things have all slid around. Hope there's nothing I'm not supposed to show in there. And then below that is another one. They have now added these slides to the drawers, so they're very smooth. Before, they were not on slides. They all are felt lined. This thing is super nice. And I think anybody who has a knife collection would be happy to have this. Um, how many knives did they say this holds? Up to 50, right? You can really pack this thing full of knives, and it's just a really great way to display them and store them. Uh, but they have stuff. If you don't have a need for a box that holds 50, they have smaller selections as well. 
This is the Armada. They have the Armory. They have watch boxes as well, like the Collector and the Weekender. They, they have a million different options now, but this one is definitely their coolest that they've made to date. All right, knives. Uh, I don't normally like to include knives on my list either because there are just so many. It's really tough to narrow down a list. So first up, uh, I've been watching Snex on Instagram and following his work for a long time, but I really wasn't ever planning on buying a Snex Custom. The Wii Vision R came out. Uh, I have talked about it a little bit on the channel. I got one at Blade Show Atlanta. Really cool knife. But then the Vision FG by Civivi comes out, also a Snex design. Basically the exact same knife, just more budget friendly. And it's awesome. I think this is one of the coolest budget knives to come out this year because it's just different. You have the super lock on it, which everybody seems to really like the super lock and the shark lock. They're different. I know. Uh, but the super lock on this very fidgety. They've made improvements over the vision R. Uh, you've got really good thumb studs on this as well, which the other one has a hole. So it's easier to deploy this. And then they removed that spine clip from the vision R to just their normal deep carry Civivi clip. So all of that comes together to create what I think is probably one of the coolest and best budget knives on the market right now in the Civivi Vision FG. Just really fidgety, really comfortable, works well, love the blade shape, love pretty much everything about this knife. And then we come to one of the coolest releases in knives this year, and that is the Flytanium Arcade. So this is a collaboration with Dimco. They have the shark lock on it, again, very similar. Everybody really seems to love this thing, and uh, so do I. I really like this knife a lot. This is probably my most carried folder since Blade Show. Uh, super fidgety. It's just really good, right? Awesome. I also have some inserts in here. If you're not familiar with what the arcade is, since Flytanium basically specializes in being able to customize your knives through scales and studs and backspacers and everything, they made a knife that you could do all of that directly through them. So through the maker, the manufacturer, you could just totally customize your knife, which is awesome. Uh, you get S35 V in steel and a pretty fair budget on this. I think they're around $200 depending on different specs that you get or, or configurations because they've got like a green one that's in stock right now. They've got a black and Ultim one. Um, this one was uh, gray aluminum and green micarta. They have titanium scales coming out and then you can obviously get all these little bits and bobs to customize it. So I have brass uh, inlays and a brass backspacer, but that is the Flytanium Arcade. So one of the things you should know about me and my carry this year is that I have really leaned heavily into fixed blades. Uh, I don't really know why that is. I can't quantify that, but I think one of the biggest impacts on me has been this knife in particular. Uh, I got my first wicket after Ricky started working with me, which was about three months ago. And now I have six of them. I got two at Georgia Bushcraft last week. This one came a few weeks before that. I just have a lot of them. I bought several of them. Uh, and I, I just really like them. Uh, so there are a few, a few that I can show you, uh, the most readily available on his website usually is the primitive wicket. So a jute wrapped handle with 1095 steel. This is also resin soaked. So it's extremely durable. Uh, there's also the Primitive XL, which he does pretty regularly as well. This one's an 80 CRV2. And then the other most common that you'll see on his website is probably one of these two. So the XL in Nitro V with a micarta handle, flared tubes, or this one right here, just a G10 handle. It's typically black G10 in Nitro V, but this one's Magnica in green. My most carried EDC fixed blade right now is probably this or a toss up between another knife that you can't buy. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, really great knives. I really, really like them. Don't be deceived by how small they are. They're very good. If you're worried about that, get the XL. Also really good. But what, one thing that makes them extra good is the sheath. So this, they don't all come with this. You can get this after the fact. This is from Offensive Industries. It is an ambi sheath. So this knife goes in there in both directions, whichever way you prefer to carry it. And it comes with the discrete carry solutions clip. Amazing combo. It's really hard to beat this. It's almost always in my pocket. That's it. Get yourself a wicket. All right, I don't need to waste too much time on this. I've included this a million times. This is the WorkSharp Guided Field Sharpener and it's too good not to include in this list as well. It's awesome. If you need a really quick edge on something and you're out in the woods, really not anything better than this. Uh, but really why it's come into prominence for me is the ceramic rod and the strop. I, I really did not maintain my edges well enough until now. 
And really all you need to maintain for most use cases is gonna be a ceramic and a strop. So I keep this in my bag, I have one in my truck, I keep them all over the place, always use them. They're 35 bucks and worth giving out as Christmas presents. You can never have too many of these. That is the WorkSharp guided field sharpener. Totally worth it. So this is something I would not normally find myself carrying, but I bought this thing on a whim and I frankly love it. And I got a second one in the mail. Uh, they're just really awesome. So this is the Wubin X3. It is a flashlight. It is a right angle flashlight, or you can twist this around 90 degrees or 180 degrees rather. And you have just a, a standard inline flashlight. You have this display on it. Four clicks gets you out of the lock mode and it turns on. You can also hold and put it in this red mode. And there's two levels of red and a bunch of different modes. It is wireless recharging. It also has this base that it can sit in and it charges via USB-C. And then there's also one that comes with this case, which is a battery charging case. It shows you the status as it's charging. And then there's another cool feature. You can use this as like a little lantern. There's so many uses packed into one little flashlight. And let's not forget that if you twist this around this way, it also works as a headlamp. This is also magnetic. I don't know what to stick it to. This thing's great. That's the only thing about it is it's got an inbuilt battery. The battery goes, flashlight's no good anymore. And you have to have some way to recharge it, be it this base, the case or wireless recharging. So. It's not without its caveats, but I think all of the benefits, you know, outweigh those few little things. I really like it. It is a little bulky in the pocket, but it fits almost like perfectly in the fifth pocket. And that's what, where I've been carrying it. I really like it. So that is the Wubin X3, really cool. And not, not super cheap. I think they're about 80 bucks, but uh, it depends on which version you get, but a really, really great flashlight for the money. This one is not technically really an EDC item, but with all the tech I have and all the travel I've been doing, this is one of my favorite things I've discovered this year. And it's a charger. It's from Bezos. I've heard the name Bezos. I don't really know how reputable they are as a company, just being honest, but I've had no problems out of this charger. I've used it quite a bit. I also s broke the, <laughs> the ground off of it, the ground lead, because I sat my knee on it and embedded it into my knee. But that aside, this thing's great. Uh, so it's a 100 watt GAN charger. You have two USB-C charging ports and then two USB-A. They can charge up to 100 watts collectively. So that's the caveat, right? You can't charge 100 watts on each. That's just not possible. However, it has a plug on the, an extension here and an extension here. So the reason this is so important is because you can charge 100 watts here and then if you have a charger like my MacBook charger, I can plug that in here and I can charge 65 watts or 100 watts, whatever my charger is, off the side of this thing and I can have two fast charging off of one outlet and you've got a built-in extension cord. This is the best travel charger I've ever come across. I was talking about one in a past video and it's good, it's good, but now it's here, it stays here at the office. This is my travel charger because so often I find that I'm somewhere that I need to plug in and one of those that plugs into the wall and just hangs falls out of the loose sockets. This doesn't doesn't tend to do that. Uh, so yeah, this Bezos 100 watt charger is incredible. So two outlets or two extension plug plugs and four charging plugs this is the best travel charger ever. All right, I told you I was gonna throw you a curveball for the last one, and uh, this is that curveball, a retro gaming handheld. This is the Miu Mini Plus. I stumbled across it on Amazon and bought it, and I don't think I've enjoyed video games nearly as much since. I bought a couple of portable handhelds this year, the Steam Deck, I bought an ROG Ally, and then I bought this thing. And I've enjoyed them, but this thing has put the biggest smile on my face just because I feel like I'm getting a little older, but like, I don't know, I want something simple. I can pick it up and put it down and play games. I can go back, so I got another one as well. Uh, this is the Ambernic RG353V. They basically do the same thing. This one's just a little more powerful, robust. And I've been playing Link's Awakening a lot, and it's just a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Uh, it just takes me back to my childhood, and these things come preloaded with thousands of games. If we, we could get into a moral debate here about you know, where you should get your ROMs or where they come from or what's right and what isn't right. I'm not getting into that. But I think if you have somebody in your life who is into retro games or somebody who used to play video games and they don't anymore, 
this is the perfect gift for them. This goes in my backpack every day. I have this one right here in my backpack every day. Whether I play it or not, it's there. This is the Game Boy I wish I had when I was a kid. And now it exists, and they're not that expensive. If you buy them direct from China, uh, these are like 50 to $60. These are more like 109, maybe 90 to 110. But if you wanna skip the line and not have to wait the several weeks for shipping, they're on Amazon. These are about 70 to 80, and this one's like 140, 150. So you're gonna pay a premium to get them from Amazon and not have to wait, but still, uh, I think it's worth to pay it and get them and have fun. I'm probably gonna buy several of these for people I know for Christmas this year. I know that my mom already wants one. She came to my house and saw it and wanted to play it and started playing some of the old games that we played together, my mom and I, on the Super Nintendo when I was a kid. So yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Big smiles and a lot of fun all around. Uh, so yeah, it's, this is not the, the thing you expected to see on this list, a retro gaming handheld, but, but I think this is the thing we needed on this list. Just something fun and different and, you know, puts a smile on your face, even if it does make a few gray hairs pop out of my beard. That's the list. I, I hope you guys found this helpful and something on this list resonates with you or whoever you're buying for. Uh, go check out my other gift guides as well. There are others. Everything we did talk about in this video is linked down below. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.